Tucker Carlson is out with a new episode of his show, taking aim at the looming threat of another world war of the U.S. getting dragged into the Israel-Palestine conflict. Let's watch how he introduced this segment. He had raised. What is the best path forward here for the United States, as well as for Israel and the rest of the world? It's worth thinking about that. The stakes are higher than many Americans understand. It's easy to imagine several other nations getting pulled into the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Those countries would include Russia, Iran, Turkey, China, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, and possibly many more. Some of those countries might take our side aligned with Israel, but most of them would not, and that would be a problem. The US military is weaker than it's been in at least 50 years since the end of Vietnam. Exhausted by two pointless conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, internally divided by identity politics, mismanaged by buffoonish hacks at the Pentagon, our services are in obvious disarray. Check the enlistment numbers. Nobody wants to join. But it's worse than that. The government that funds our army is bankrupt. The man who leads it is senile. Now is not the time for a world war. We would lose. Later, Vivek, wait in. Let's take a listen to that. How could this go wrong? So I think that one of the things we ought to do is remember the mistakes we have made in our own recent past, in the last 20 to 25 years. After 9-11, how did we end up in $6 trillion plus of wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Thousands of American lives that we won't get back. Part of how we ended up there was in the era after 9-11, you remember it. The tolerance for debate was very limited. Shut up, sit down, do as you're told, go along with the plan. I am worried, Tucker, that's the beginning of the environment I'm seeing right now as it relates to the current conflicts. We see. So I'm glad, as I've said before, that at least one of the GOP candidates, Vivek Ramaswamy, and then Tucker Carlson, who's one of the biggest and most influential um, conservative uh, media figures certainly was when he was a part of Fox News, and I think his foreign policy analysis is just sorely missed right now yeah. in the in the broader conservative media ecosystem because he is speaking for they are speaking for a whole lot of conservatives, a whole lot of people on the right who um, are not you know who are not expressing any sympathy to be clear for Hamas, who are not saying that Israel going after Hamas is inappropriate but are saying, what is the U.S.'s role in all of this? And are we going to end up being slow walked or, or maybe faster than slow walked into a broader conflict that is not in the U.S.'s interest, it's not in Israel's interest, it's not in Palestine's interest, it's not in the world's interest. And Vivek is so, so correct, how soon we forget, so correct to bring up the immediate post 9-11 landscape where unfortunately our political leaders got way too much leeway to do whatever they wanted with respect to American policy and also with respect to domestic policy in terms of the Patriot Act, the surveillance. We're still going through the asinine airport security um, uh, regime that got invented at the time that does not make us any safer whatsoever. It's just a waste of time for all Americans and a massive waste of money um, But that we enshrined, that we enshrined because People were understandably afraid, and our political leaders took advantage of that. That is not something we want to forget, and, uh, and I, I, I want to hear even more people on the right echo what Vivek and Tucker said there. What's, what's wild is that not only did people not learn the lesson of 9-11, but 9-11 is being evoked currently as a reason for why there should be more escalation. Yeah. People are arguing, well, America got to go and do a 20-year war, so why don't we get to do that? Right. Like why, it is somehow, you're, uh, it's a double standard for you to say that Israel shouldn't make America's right. exact same mistakes. So I completely second, I, you know, it's a weird world to be in, frankly, as a progressive, but it is undeniably true that Tucker Carlson's voice of moderation in the foreign policy context is sorely missed at Fox News. I think I mentioned this on the podcast, on the, on the show earlier this week, but I have a friend who says that his dad watches Fox exclusively and is Israeli and is 
uh, what could be convinced by someone like Tucker Carlson but that he's having a really hard time with getting him to see any other shade of this conflict because there really is no other voice making that case. A case that is very popular yeah. among so many Republicans and independents, but no longer a voice on Fox News that is anywhere close to that. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's uh, you know, I, Jesse Waters is often good on civil liberties issues, has spoken out against um, great some of the greater um, like uh, like surveillance bills of social media companies that you know the, the one aimed at TikTok that was also going to like really result in censorship and all the other mm -hmm. uh, fronts and he he dragged Lindsey Graham on his show and yelled at him about it so you know I'm I'm hopeful there can be more a th a thoughtful commentary from other uh, conservatives I saw Matt Walsh actually I saw him disagreeing with Ben Shapiro about what oh, the yeah. U S response should mm -hmm. be because there are, there are different strains in conservative thought and Republican thought. Mm -hmm. um, on foreign policy, there are divisions. There's not unanimity of thought. But the let's slow down, let's not get involved in another war is a more popular view on the right than um, than a lot of people realize because it doesn't have as many it doesn't have as many public facing advocates yeah. as as befits. It's at the actual size, which is why people get surprised every time there's a really charismatic anti-interventionist figure like Donald Trump, like Ron Paul before him, um, like Tucker Carlson, uh, who ends up with a huge audience, a huge, a huge following, tons of supporters yeah. because uh, because it's a, it's a you know it's a it's a buyer's market or, or whatever yeah. the correct terminology is. Yeah, I mean it's also confusing there. because so many of the people who occupy this position with respect to Ukraine, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, immediately. I don't know if you want to call it a flip-flop or just it's a different context, different feelings, are, are, are zeal zealously uh, eager to support Israel in any way, um, including getting yeah. American involved these in people a war. Need it, it, it's, to, to Biden's Sorry, credit, he did make these comments saying um, that Israel needs to avoid making the mistakes of 9-11. He made that, uh, those remarks at the speech when he was um, speaking in Israel earlier this week. But when it's also being reported, as we covered earlier on the show, that he has privately told Benjamin Netanyahu that we have his back and are willing to send troops to help fight this, this blossoming, burgeoning war, that is even more concerning because it shows that he has some public awareness that this is unpopular, that we should know better, and yet for whatever reason is still willing to make that private commitment. Many Republican members need time to go back to their districts mm -hmm. Hold some town halls. Talk mm. to your voters. Mm. See what they think about this. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to lose support for them for strongly condemning Hamas and and speaking out about the evils Israel has suffered, and for, and frankly for even affirming Israel's right to self-defense and to taking many of the actions it's taking now. But when when they talk about what the U.S.'s response is and and military support and whether there should be troops and whether Israel should have this be escalated to the point where there's greater conflict in the Middle East that we're involved in. Ask conservative Republicans who voted for you what they think about that. I think a lot of members are going to be surprised what hey, they hear. Democrats should, <laughs> yes. should do well, it yes. too. Democrats should do it too. Well, yes, and, 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 you know, 100 percent. And sometimes it feels like the Democratic consensus on this stuff is even, is, is like more unanimous, tighter, frankly. Yeah. Not to say there aren't, there aren't people, uh, you know, a couple people on the left um, who are um, uh, who are very disinclined to do continuous war funding. And the activists, I think the activist, the activist community sure. is very much on the left, as you saw from the protesters in the Capitol yesterday. Uh, those Jewish groups, um, code pink groups like that, are very much left leaning. But uh, absolutely, when it comes to Congress, it's a it's a two headed snake. Yeah. Well, more rising right after this.